Welcome everybody back to AuburnVersus.com. Mike's event, sports editor of the Opelika Auburn News, We're joined by Colin Mickle, the Auburn University beat writer for the Opelika Auburn News. And Colin, lost to South Florida on Saturday. Tommy's press conference today. Uh, kind of trying to put that behind him now. Um, a, a loss like this, can you put behind it? This close to it, going into SEC play with Mississippi State next week. How bad does this loss hurt this team and sting them going into the, to the conference play? Well, I mean, nobody closes the door on a loss like Auburn. I mean, they, they, you know, I don't think that they're thinking about it, that it's haunting them. I think what will haunt them is the problems that were displayed against South Florida, the same problems that were displayed against Kansas State. You know, this is a team with serious flaws. You know, a team with the defense is being overworked, a team with a pretty ineffective running game, although Mario Fan looks like he can solve some of that. Uh, you know, and a team with a, a fifth-year senior quarterback who is not playing well. Uh, you know, no matter what excuses they make for him, Brandon Cox is playing very poorly to be in his position right now, and, and that's a serious problem and will remain a serious problem. Right, and the loss to, to South Florida, turnovers were a key, and Brandon Cox had three of those turnovers, a fumble and two interceptions, and then Mario Fannin getting his first start, or first playing time, as he didn't start, but he got his first playing time um, as a redshirt freshman, fumbles twice in the third quarter on key drives. It seemed like Auburn didn't get the ball back in the third quarter. They were there on defense for a long time. That, the turnovers, you can't turn the ball over five times and expect to win, especially against a team like South Florida, who everybody thinks is an upset, but that's a pretty good football team. You even picked them last week. Yeah, I did. Thank you for bringing that I'm up. Just, it it allows sure. me to brag without sounding like I'm bragging, but yes, I picked them. We won't talk about how I picked them to win 12, not because that was a little off, but I did pick the upset. Anyway. And, and the turnover is a big part of Auburn's problem. They had they had two, and uh, Brandon threw two, two interceptions against Kansas State. They've got to limit those turnovers going into conference play. How do they do that, and, and, and is Brandon, how does he get his confidence back? I think as far as you know, the, the, the Brandon turnovers, as far as the interceptions go, I think you're going to see a much more conservative offense until, uh, you know, until Brandon gives them a reason to be confident in him. I think that you're going to see a lot of two tight ends. I think you're going to see a lot of runs. Uh, they're going to lean on the run game and the defense even more than they already have. And fans don't like to hear that. Fans want to see the long passes. Fans want to see the playmakers that they've, that, you know, they've read about making plays. But the only playmakers that you're likely to see making plays for now are Mario Fannin and a bunch of guys on defense. Yeah, and, and they really haven't actually had a playmaker in the last two games. Gabe McKenzie caught two touchdown passes, but on, other than that on offense, I mean, that might be the only the only guy who's, who's actually done anything consistently in, in two games. Ben Tate's shown flashes. I mean, he had, he had, two, he had good runs in each of the games. You know, again, Fannin... Uh, has not shown the the, the burst that, that you know I, I expected him to show, but he is a hard nosed, consistent runner. You know he he grinded out every one of his sixty two yards. Um, you know, I think he's a guy that can be a playmaker. But you're right. I mean, the, you know, the wide receiving core, and again, a lot of those problems you know start with number twelve. But the, the receiving receivers have not made big plays. They haven't been you know making guys miss and, and taking it for six. And, and then that this offense needs that element. Obviously, with, with the offense, with a fifth-year senior quarterback, you don't expect to have these kind of struggles coming out of out of a quarterback like Brandon Cox. But this, the receivers did drop some balls, didn't help him when he did get the ball to him. A little shakeup this this week on our receivers, at least people practicing with the first team or in different positions. Right. I mean, you, you know, Ro, uh, Robert Dunn says that he's you know working at the the Z receiver, which is their outside. Uh, I think it's the flanker. Prashe Rodriguez has been the starter in the first two games. Uh, Rod and Prashe, Rod has taken the bulk of the first team snaps. Uh, Chris Slaughter's getting some work with the first team. Tim Hawthorne's moved into the first team slot spot, uh, which was originally Rob Dunn's. Uh, you know, I think that's you're going to see more of Dunn outside and probably less of Prashe Rodriguez overall. Um, you know, and, and Robert Dunn is a guy who, when he's had the ball, for the most part, he's made plays. He's had some some shaky plays in uh, punt returns, but some very good ones as well, and some very good plays in the passing game. They're going to need guys like Robert Dunn to step up, but also also this week, if they're going to take playmakers anywhere they can get. Them. Absolutely. And and so and on defense, you talked about a defense that was overworked. Chris Evans really stepped up his game, played, had no choice but to play a lot of games with Trey Blackman out. Injuries on defense, where does that put Auburn's defense going into South Can the SEC opener against Mississippi State this weekend? Well, I mean, I, I think there's no question that they're under some pressure. I mean, you know, Blackman is, is hurt and, and may not play uh, this Saturday. Aaron Savage, uh, you know, is questionable. Uh, Jonathan Wilhite, Tommy Tuberville said will play, but sparingly. Uh, you know, these are these are key guys. These are guys that they're counting on to make plays. Merrill Johnson won't play uh, Saturday. You know, these are starting starting defensive players on a very good defense. You know, and they'll be missed. Uh, the good thing is that Auburn has had a chance in these first two games to display some depth. Guys like Pat Lee and, and Zach Gilbert uh, have have played very well. Um, you know, obviously Chris Evans stepping in for Blackman was huge. Um, you know, and and Chris is a guy who's waited his turn and and now has turned into a, you know a very solid player. You know, that's a positive for Auburn. And what does this team have to do against Mississippi State? You mentioned that they're going to get conservative on offense, maybe to get some confidence back in Brandon Cox, or at least until he proves he can do something. But what is this team against a, a defense that's pretty good and, and, and a coach of Sylvester Crew, everybody's got a soft spot for him because of, because of just he's a good guy and a great coach. 
our great coach and, and our great guy. He's a baby. good guy. He's a, <laughs> say he's a great guy. And, and coaching aside, he's a motivator. And, and that's why everybody likes, it, likes him. But what does Auburn have to do against Mississippi State different uh, in, in terms of the defensive, uh, defensive game plan to maybe get the ball? I mean, turnovers might be a big, a big key. You know, the coaches keep saying that the defense has to force turnovers, and obviously you'd like the defense to force turnovers, but, you know, I don't think that in the defensive meeting rooms anyone is actually angry that they didn't. You know, I mean, would they like to force turnovers? Absolutely. But you can't be disappointed in the way they played defense against South Florida. They, they stood on their heads and held South Florida out of the end zone for huge stretches at a time when they were getting no help from their offense. You know, to say that the defense – for Tommy Tuberville to say the defense has to force turnovers for Auburn to have a chance to win is, a, to, in my mind, a huge indictment of the offense. It's a, a slap in the face to the offense. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if your defense has to force multiple turnovers every single game for you to win, A, you're going to lose a lot because that just doesn't happen in college football. And B, it's telling you that your offense you know, has to be spoon-fed the ball in, in positive situations to make anything happen. Well, how, what does it say about Auburn's offense not going forward in, for, in, in the fourth quarter, uh, didn't want to give up another turnover, but there was, there was, diff, there was times there that they could have went for a kill shot and, and didn't. Or when they did, they, they had mistakes. So what does that really say about Auburn's offense? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, fans are very upset that they didn't go for the jugular at the end of regulation. And, you know, obviously fans always want to see shots deep down the field. But, you know, you can't bring a knife to a gunfight. Right now, Auburn's offense, you know, Auburn would be much worse if they decided to throw it deep every play on offense. That's not where they are. And, you know, frankly, Brandon Cox is a, is a great kid, a very smart guy, a college graduate, a leader, the tough, one of the toughest players on the team. But he's a fifth-year senior quarterback, and his coach and his offensive coordinator are talking about him needing to be a game manager and distribute the ball to his playmakers. That can't happen at a, at a top-tier program like Auburn wants to be. A fifth-year senior quarterback has to be the playmaker, has to be able to, you know, to make up when his teammates you know, are, are not playing well. And Brandon Cox so far has not done that nearly enough. One player who has stepped up, and, and, and everybody thought he was going to be a good player, didn't realize how great, how early, is kicker Wesley Byer. I mean, he's six, his six field goals lead, are tied for the lead in the NCAA right now after two games. He's only missed one on a bad ankle, and that was a 39-yarder. Wesley Byron, when he gets healthy and can do some kickoffs, is going to help, has helped this team a lot and will continue to help this team. Oh, there's no question. I mean, Wes Byram, uh, you know, is right now he's the most influential member of that freshman class, and he's one of the most productive players on the team. I mean, you know, they would be in much worse shape if they didn't have Wes Byram. He is absolutely everything you could possibly want in a kicker, and Auburn fans should be very excited at the chance to have Wesley Byram for four years. Staying on special teams real quick, Colin, the kickoff return team, disappointing, obviously gave up a big, a big kick. Um, or kick return to set, put up USF in position to kick, kick the game tying field goal, send it into overtime. What is what is Eddie Grant saying this week that they've got to do better on special teams? Tackle. I mean, it starts with tackle. Uh, you know, when 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 Auburn kicks the ball to the other team and that guy catches it, then somebody in an Auburn jersey has to run into him and make him fall down. Uh, you know, they didn't do that. They missed six tackles against South Florida and. Uh, you know, it, 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 it honestly, according to Eddie Grant, is pretty simple. They just have to get down the field and not, not over pursue and not miss tackles. You know, uh, without that big kickoff return, South Florida probably does not win that game. Uh, you know, that's that's huge. And special teams are so important, especially for a team like this year's Auburn team that is having to play things so close to the vest. You know, having to have games come down to the fourth quarter. You can't make mistakes on special teams, whether it's fumbling returns or allowing big returns or missing field goals or bad kickoffs. You, you, you have to be perfect on special teams to give your offense and defense a chance. So, Colin, with, with that game in the books, Auburn's 1-1, one one, but 0-0 zero zero in SEC. They start that this week. Predictions on, on Mississippi State, and is this a chance for Auburn to kind of get back on the horse again and, 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 and work out some of the kinks? Well, you know, I, I think anyone who thinks that this is going to be a 52-0 you know, to nothing win hasn't been watching Auburn play. You know, uh, I think that you'll see this is going to be 28 nothing, you know, 35 nothing, something like that. I can't imagine the Mississippi State defense uh, scoring on Auburn's, excuse me, the Mississippi State offense scoring on Auburn's defense. It's kind of hard for me to imagine them getting first downs. I mean, Mississippi State is, is awful on, on offense right now, uh, you know, and, and, and they have serious, serious problems. Auburn's defense, obviously, outrageously good, even with the injuries. Auburn's offense against a tough Mississippi State defense, I'm not expecting this to be a, a pinball-like offense, but they'll, they'll put up some points. I'd say 28-0. 28-0, and I, I would say Auburn has shut out Mississippi State the last two times and played them scoreless for 55 minutes in 2004, so they've actually only given up 14 points in the last three years to Mississippi State. So I think the shutout will happen probably 21-28, something like that. Colin, I'll agree with you. Just what a copycat. Make, make, me look, I mean, make me look Internet smart. viewers, hold him <laughs> responsible. That's right.